So what I did was I sat and I talked to people. Ask children, what is quality teaching? What does it look like to you? What does it feel like to you? Talk to parents, what does quality mean to you? Talking to headmasters. Taking it all together, if you can imagine, I had walls, a whole wall full of all these concepts of what quality meant. I mean, just walls covered with it. And it seemed to be all over the place. There was no order to it. One person says, um, quality is getting good grades. The other person says, quality is not getting good attention. Yeah? And after it was all over, it came down to this. I found that four quadrants it all fit into. Every person's definition or understanding of quality came down to this. The biological, physical, the intellectual, psychological. So in other words, it talked about people's psychological health. It talked about their intellectual, right? Just to start with, we're getting very general to start with because it's all going to fit in. The sociological, working with other people. Teachers talking about quality, working cooperatively. But also there's the intellectual, that within that cooperation, there's intellectual needs that need to be met. And then there's this ideal of existential. existential. People talked about quality experiences with their dog. You know, a quality experience is for me after a hard week of work, I'm walking with my dog and there's just this, there's this energy, I can't really describe it. And so and you saw many statements like that. People talked about knitting. People talked about mountain bike riding. Some people talked artistry, but no matter what it was, there was a similar experience. It's very much, there's a man called Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, and he wrote a book called Flow. It's very similar to Flow, like morphogenic fields with children. So yeah, so you had this idea of quality and you had these four quadrants. So now, all these different statements on the wall I was able to pin up inside here. So if you take a moment, you think about the things you think about with quality, fit in one to one of these boxes, yeah? But within this quadrants, there was much more specificity as we started looking deeper into what it meant, yeah? Because I needed more of a framework than this. What I found out was, within this, people talked about these four different dimensions of quality. They talked about this common sense, this common quality, which was basing, meeting a basic need. So within these four quadrants, there were basic needs. So the biological. A PE teacher says you need to run the mile within 12 minutes, right? It's, there's a, it's a basic need, this is a basic step. Intellectually, you need to have a, a five paragraph essay with no spelling errors, basic. Sociologically, you're gonna work together and we're gonna have no pulling of hair, we're not gonna steal pencils, basic, yeah? And existentially basic, when we're reading about the Holocaust so that people understand that there's a thing here about life and what life means. Yeah, but these were basic. So we call that sort of the normal quality. But however, there are these three other levels that were sort of metanormal. And the reason that these are not solid circles is because everything here is fluid. Nothing's solid, yeah? Because the idea is not real, it's helpful. Transcendent. People talk about transcendency in each one of these dimensions. The idea that they stepped outside of themselves you know, you talk to a child and you, they're telling you about they wrote a song. And they said, you know what, when I'm playing that music, I almost am about behind myself and I see myself playing. You talk to a teacher and you say, well, that lesson was great. They go, wow, I can't believe, Mr. Gray, that was an hour. It felt like 10 minutes to me. It was almost like I didn't even know it was me. And by the time this class was over and I looked in the mirror, I couldn't believe my lipstick was like this and my mascara had gone down because I had just transcended myself, yeah? And in each one of these dimensions, people talked about transcendency. But then some people talked about quality experiences where it was transpersonal, where they connect with another human being, or they connect with whatever it is they're working with, which is a whole different level, yeah? Because it's not just transcending yourself. It was that you and I are, are at such a level in cooperation that you have a transpersonal experience, yeah? I was out with Jeff the other day. I had transpersonal experiences with Jeff. You know, just, just as a day we start off, we had a meal, had a basic quality, yeah, had a meal. But there were experiences where I transcended myself, and then there was this transpersonal. It's a connection with another person that's really hard to talk about, yeah? And then lastly was this idea of ineffable, which means there's no words for it. It's one of those experiences where you just look at each other. Now, you have that fantastic presentation, yeah, where you're just, you're absolutely in that flow. And then when you're done with it, someone says, how was it? And they just look in your eyes and you go, it was just brilliant. We have these experiences, yeah? In each one of those quadrants, yeah? Going a little bit faster. Are you with me? Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, so when you look at this, now, and all this is is a map right now. So this is a map that I had now. I had this map. Obviously, this is not pretty clear. I had this map now to try to understand quality because if you said to me, let's, we'll give you an example. Um, share with me, Andy. Uh, 
An example of uh, quality when it comes to you working with children. When you're working with children, you're doing art. Give me an example of what a quality experience is for you working with a child. I think when, um, when, a, when I ask a question from a child, and the child not only answers the question, but then gives me a question back, and also tells me something that I didn't know. Fantastic. Before. That's beautiful, yeah? So that's, that's a nice... Uh, yeah. So if we're with Andy and he talks about that, we say, okay, Andy, it sounds like you're talking about some sociological, right, connections. Yeah. So we put a little X where the experience was, right, this transpersonal. There's also intellectually, you said something about something you didn't know before. Yeah. So we could put a little thing here in common because it's something there, right? And as we kept talking, we could keep talking and see where you are, yeah? Yeah. But some teachers, when you work with them, you find out that everything they're doing is in one box. It's meeting the basic inside intellectual psychological. It's in here, the biological physical, and it's in the common sociological. Because you, you ask them, you talk to them, and if you can show them, like, look, this is where your teaching is, we want to expand, yeah? We want to have a total transformational quality experience, yeah? So what it does is it gave me a map to have a conversation with the teacher. So by having this map, when we talk about quality together, each one of us, we can check it out. I use this uh, with Jack the other day because I was out with my partner. And sometimes we can't understand how we could both go out to a dinner and a movie and have what would seem like a really good plan. I come home and I thought I had the most amazing date night. We had a great night and she's a little bit sad. And you're like, well, how did that happen? It was a great meal, it was a great film. It was because my, before I went out, if you checked off, Billy, what were you thinking of? I went out to have a sociological, transpersonal experience with her, yeah? But I also just wanted to go and see this movie about Carl Jung, and, and uh, it was just more of an intellectual thing. Her whole reason to go out with me, that night was existential. The idea that I wanted our relationship, I really needed to do that, yeah? We were totally in different quadrants of quality, and our expectations were different, yeah? Now we can understand where we were on the map, yeah? But that's only a map, right? We needed something to help guide us. So when I went and looked at all the definitions, it all fit in here. So we're talking 274 official, but about 800 conversations. Because we, I talk to everyone. People working on the street that are cleaning garbage, the taxi cab driver, the guy cleaning your shoes. Tell me a little bit about a quality day for you. I come back and I see if it fits. And I said, all right, everything seems to fit. But then I need to understand, well, that's the map. How is this going to be helpful as a teacher or as a leader? So, went through and realized, when I went back and talked to people, that, in other words, this explanatory model described the landscape. That's great. But I didn't know, like, how am I going to actually use it? Like, how is it going to help me? Well, I found out these behaviors, and it just happened to come out that capacity fits, yeah? <laughs> these are the kind of behaviors people talked about that allowed them to meet the quality, their own quality needs and others. Care for others, see. Autotelic, doing something for the sake of doing it, yeah? You're doing your writing, yeah, for yourself. It's autotelic, right? That's where your need's being met. And that's a good thing, but now we can understand that you're meeting your quality needs through an autotelic experience. Being prepared, it's important. Alliance with others. Choice, I, you, us, this is the friar idea, yeah? Not I, it, because in I, it, I manipulate you to get what I want. You talk the whole time about I, you, us with your students, yeah? The nurturing, that's all in there. <coughs> T is training and Y is yearning for success. What happens is, like anything with a teacher that's being very base, if I get off the map and it's always in the middle, many times it's always prepared and training. Those are the two places that you see it. So when you put the model all together and you're having a conversation about quality, now you can have a conversation where you really can talk about quality. Because I can say to you as a teacher, hey, let's talk about these capacity behaviors for quality. And the teacher says, well, all right, um, my kids are very prepared. They have their pencils and pens. Um, alliance with others, it's very cooperative. You're like, okay. But again, if it's the ranking of the top four, we're not really with alliance. Yeah, it's there. And I do training. So what we start doing is to have a professional growth. We're going to get better. Is that we start talking about how can we really demonstrate these behaviors more. Why? Because these behaviors affect the quality experiences that we have. And the quality experiences that we have, the exposure that we have, has us change this. A good quality experience with IU us makes that behavior important to us. We do the behavior, it affects that. Yeah? So the idea is when we're working with each other, this is the 
fastest 10 minute presentation yet, is that you have this kind of thing going on as a teacher or as a headmaster, whatever you're doing. I'm sitting here going, huh, I want to understand where in this model of kids' expectations are quality wise. So I look here and I X off where it is, and I look what capacity behavior do I need to use to be able to best meet their quality needs, yeah? So it's constantly an interaction, and it's constantly thinking this. So at all times when I'm talking to someone, or I'm working with someone, I'm always thinking about these things. Hence, living theory comes in, because I find out that I contradict my values every day when I'm teaching or I'm working, and it drives me crazy. Because I want to believe I'm a good humanist. I believe in social justice. I'm a good listener. I care about people. I'm there for the kids. But then I come home and my partner says, well, you know, I watched that. It didn't really seem that you were really in an I, you, us thing. It seemed like an I, it thing. You wanted that person for bus duty. It's raining out. And you sort of were very manipulative about it, yeah? You're like, yeah, I hadn't really thought about that, yeah? Was I thinking about the other person? No. I wanted the job done and I acted I, it, yeah? I'm able to identify where I violate, where I contradict my values and beliefs because I have a model that allows me to do it. Is this real? It's helpful. That's the idea, it's helpful. It's better than what we have now because right now in the public schools, quality means grades, ranking, homework completion, right? That's the model we have now. What I'm proposing is that TQ as a model is an evolution of that. Five years, 10 years down the road, Hope this model will be outdone, but what is true is it's better than what we have. It's better than me looking at someone's grades, their homework completions, and how their grade book. These are the discussions that we try to have at all times. So tonight, I'll tell you my experience. So if someone said, Billy, it was a good night. Well, that's pretty general, right? Oh, it was great. Joy was great. Tracy was great. Everyone was great. Mark was great. <coughs> it's like, no. There were times tonight that intellectually, psychologically, I was there quite a bit. But I'll tell you, when I listened to a few people talking, there was really some transcendent, transpersonal experiences in there. So I had experiences in this area. I had a few here. And existentially, I had one here in the transcendent. Because here I am from San Francisco, California, right? Sitting in a room with Brits and Bath. I just got off a train, yeah? And there was a moment there where I just forgot myself. I was just in a room with a bunch of like-minded, caring people, yeah? And then I caught myself because I wasn't listening. But it was an important moment, because that was, that was critical. And for me tonight, that was the most important. That sense of meaning of being here tonight. At first, in the beginning, I only expected this to happen. So if you ask me before I came in, this is where I came in tonight. I came in to be here, and a little bit here. But I had experiences in here. Biological, physical, I took care of that before I came in tonight. I asked Jack and I said, can we stop and get some coffee and water beforehand? Because I knew if I did not meet that need, I wouldn't be able to meet the rest of these. So as simple as it seems as getting some water beforehand, I was thinking about what are my quality needs. So to reflect on this, think about this as you're teaching, or as you're presenting, or you're working on your thing. Are you using capacity behaviors? And where in the dimension of quality do you find yourself most often being? And ask yourself, are you living the values that you say that you do? And this is the way I hold myself accountable. And so what I did with the case studies is I constantly look at things, and this is the way, Jack, I look at living theory for myself. Because I have a model that allows me to understand when I contradict my values and beliefs. And instead of beating myself up about it, I just say, okay, it causes anxiety, but I can have a plan. Billy, you've been spending so much time here. Let's pick it up a notch. Let's do it here. And that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Good for you, Andrea. Yeah. Was just some feedback, that would be great. I mean, that's, I mean, obviously, I did that super, super fast speed, yeah? But it goes to what you said, right? Because that's, you're, you wrote exactly what it is that I did. It's our framework, yeah? Yeah, did he get this? That's correct. Oh, you, oh, you did yes, it again? Yes, because, yes, 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 that. yes. <laughs> no, well, I know, it's all right. No, yeah. it's all right. no, I think, you know, we'll put it on the private one so you can see. Yeah. For the clarity, you know, for us to then share with the others who aren't here tonight. Do you not find, if you go to a lecture, or you see a teacher in an English school, oh. don't you find it just so dull? Well, you know what, because with that model, I'm constantly thinking, how am I going to help them expand? How do I, because that's, you know, Jack, right, there's three steps of living theory, right? Transform the self, influence others to transform, and transform the social formation of where you are. So I'm never bored because it's such a huge, living theory is so rigorous as a research method. It's so rigorous. Think about that. A lot of dissertations, people, they change, they're worried about other people. You're talking about yourself, 
others and the social formation of where you work. That's phenomenal. So it's not, if anything, it's boring. What happens is it's overwhelming. It's over, the, the hard thing is to have a good partner or, or being able to meditate and be able to center yourself again because you find yourself becoming extremely despondent that, wow, this, this is boring. How are we going to go from here? This teacher that's just being didactic all the time, it's just basic intellectual, it's basic sociological, and the person thinks they're outstanding, yeah? And then working with them to say, you are an outstanding human being, now let's, let's expand. So how do you do that? How do you influence that? And, you need, and that's what living theory, my interpretation of living theory, is that's what it's about. So if each one of us talked about our model of quality, and we have that for ourselves, yeah? That's fantastic. So I'm not saying go follow this. What I would say is, okay, now I've shared with you, now let's work together and see where yours are. And if you're the teacher and I'm the principal or vice versa, now we have a language we can talk about. What's today's lesson about? I'm doing a lesson where sociologically, I want kids to have transcendent experiences. That's my goal today. So I want you to look for it. Well, how do I measure that? Just talk to the kids. One question I ask for transcendent is, how long did the class feel like today? Kid says, wow, I can't believe class is over. I just started it. Right? He had no sense of time. That's an indicator that they weren't aware of that every minute. There was something transcendent in it, yeah? That would be an example. That's why in the school I took the clocks out. There were no clocks on the walls, yeah? No watches, they go in a box, nothing. Because that stops us. That hurts us from transcendent. And you know there's 10 minutes left in class, what do kids do? 10 minutes left, I'm done. Same graduate, we all do the same thing. It's just what we do. We're thinking about dinner, getting home, cleaning the house. So yeah, the clock, it hurts you. Yeah, that's just an example. You know the model that you had on there, which is on a card that you've got? Yeah, yeah. I haven't got that on the web that you can access. No, I haven't put it anywhere, yeah. Okay. yeah. What, what, it, what came to my mind was, um, if you look at an MRI scan, you look at the brain, yeah. and you had, you had a little bit lighting up the different parts of the, the, cort the cortex, occipital, whatever, um, and neuroscientists claim, say, that this demonstrates that the person is feeling, thinking, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to, that's not a way of dismissing what you're saying at all, that was just what came to mind. It seems to me that you, and I'm impressed by what you said, but it seems to me you're, you're aiming to micromanage learners' needs and feelings in a way that is probably, it seems extremely ambitious, and, I'm not, and I don't know that it's something that we, we do, do we? Um, I, I, it's something that we, we, we rather... Uh, we, we, we're rather reluctant to do. I appreciate the question. I, I think this, the idea of this is not to micromanage. The idea is by doing this, I find out I am micromanaging because if I keep track of where I'm going, I realize that, ooh, I am micromanaging. Okay. I'm contradicting my values because I have what you were looking for, a framework for what cooperative means. By not having a framework for cooperative, I don't know when I am or am not being cooperative because if I believe myself to be so, I use the example of a church person who talks on Sunday and gives a great lecture, they're a reader, and the whole week, they're absolutely miserable to people. But on Sunday, they're such a fantastic reader, they say, well, Joan is such a great Christian, she reads, she volunteers, and then you work with Joan during the week, or Jack, or Joan, whoever it is, and you go, oh my goodness, this person is the worst. They're backbiting, they spread rumors, yeah? And again, by having this, you can kind of figure out, instead of just saying bad or good, black or white, micromanage, you're able to actually understand. Yeah? Yeah. I, I think if we, if we put the video of your presentation this evening, just as you were then, with the diagram, in yeah. relation to the quality, where you would be coming out of that center yeah. in terms of how you, your way of being with us this evening, yeah. I do think that that would be um, a very powerful and give us a very powerful understanding of how to use you know, that inquiry process. Uh, but having you there, you know, doing and communicating with that energy and the values, and we were, you know, we can try that because it's great. Marie actually actually got that, didn't you? So we'll be able to do that. But there's something about you um, actually showing us how you're using that, you know, and coming through the centre in relation to the quality that you're expressing, which for me is very powerful. <laughs> We'll be able to show that to others. So many thanks. Now, to see have you been, have you been able? To, have you do you have disciples? Well, see, and again, see, that, that would be the last thing. That, well, okay, no, that's wrong. Yeah, I, I understand what you're. I, yeah. I, I understand your question. The answer would be yes, because what happened was the reason we were able to get a, a freshman class where we got rid of ranking that we did that is that we had to believe in these things. Now again, this is the model I use. Yeah. 
So when I talk to teachers about quality, they don't have to learn this, yeah? This is for the people that really want to. When I'm working with teachers, I'm asking questions about what their intention is. They love the book, they want the kids to transcend them. They'll say that, I want the kids to transcend themselves. So I'll look at their practice, and we'll have, I'll ask them questions so that I can be able to understand and we start moving that way. As we mature together, we could go to something like this, right? But you don't need to know this to make it work. What it is is I have a model of understanding that allows me, when I listen to people, to see where they're operating from. Where is their value system currently? And I listen to what they say they want to do, and I try to help influence them to become that person. Joyce, you're talking about your work writing for yourself. In a way, we're trying to influence you, yeah? To move out of that space wherever you are on this, right? And to start and to widen that so that you have a bigger effect. It's, we're not trying to micromanage you, yeah? But we could be if we was an I it relationship. If I just need you to publish because I want you in my magazine because it's good, that could be I it, right? But I you is that. You're such, you have such a great thing to share, yeah? That we're working together. And that changes the whole cultural milieu of what we're doing. It changes what we do. But it also makes us hyper aware of the contradictions that we have. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> but the hard part is I didn't have any yeah. intro to it or any. <laughs> it, was, it was sort of like we just dove into it, but at this time of night I want to do it very as quickly as possible, yeah? See as well, you see, Joy's Joy's um, writing and thesis is about the young person's quality of experience. Yes. And um, we don't have that dialogue. We don't have that debate in yeah. Britain. It's all about the quality of the outputs. Yeah, yeah. That's all you yeah. ever hear is outputs, outputs, outputs. Nobody asks the question about the young person's quality of experience yeah. or the teacher's quality of experience yeah, in that nourishing. dialogue. The nourishing response. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nourishing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The nurturing. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions or feedback? Thank you for your feedback. Thank you. oh, yeah. that, that's really interesting. And the idea is to have feedback so you see mm -hmm. where, in the presentation itself when I talk, where are contradictions, yeah? Where are contradictions? So always looking. Jack's greatest gift that he's given to me as a researcher is to look at living contradictions. Because you, I believe myself to be someone looking for social justice and care and giving children hope and witnessing their lives. And every day I look, am I doing that with the kid that I really don't connect with? With the parent who just absolutely drives me out of my mind. The very sight of them makes me crawl. <laughs> do I listen? Do I really listen? And when she looks at me, does she felt listened to? Regardless if we don't like each other, do you feel listened to? Do you feel I witnessed you as a human being, a sacred person? Do you feel that when you're done? And that's what Tara is doing. Yeah. And also I think Nigel Harris. You know, we'll be able to share this with Nigel as well. Yeah. Oh, I wish we could have done a little more intro and stuff. <laughs> would, 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 not would, you, would you be willing to make this publicly available? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was talking to Jack about. I mean, that's the idea. Because you want to know what? As we work together, it becomes more beautiful, right? Everything, look how Jack's stuff has, right since the 90s, how it's just sort of grown organically. Right, Jack, you didn't know where it was going to go in, in the 90s. I mean, you had a yeah, like, concept. Yeah. But where it's gone is gone in directions, I'm sure, you're like, wow, that, that's fantastic. Yes. I mean, it's, it, from flamingo dance to a business yeah. person to a teacher, I mean, that's the beauty of it. So, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the time that I, I shared with you tonight. It means so much to me to be able to sit with like-minded people trying to figure out how we improve the world and we work together. I, I can't thank you enough. It's an honor to be here tonight. It really, truly, deeply is an honor. And I, I really thank you, and I really thank you for your feedback. <laughs> and don't like acetate. I was going to say. <laughs> that's acetate. That's, that's, that's acetate the mortifying part of the presentation. Like, what, America, they're using acetate now? What was this, 1968? <laughs> and I'll pass the bucket round now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, acetate's expensive. Oh, yeah. I've got a few cases of them. I go in there, I go, nine quid.